So given that, what makes a merchant a good candidate for, for a headless commerce solution? Um, I think number one, where speed truly matters. Um, and from, from an e-com standpoint, I mean, that's going to be like uh, um, products with longer consideration cycles, speed is not as crucial, right? Because it's not, the conversion process is not based on how quickly can I get that person to check out? They're gonna be coming back and, you know, if I'm selling TVs, for example, PWA may not provide me as much value because I'm not trying to get the, the performance benefit is not going to have the same conversion benefit. Um, but again, selling TVs, I may have a lot of content storytelling that I need to do. And that ability to push beyond the barriers of what um, Shopify can do from a content standpoint is, is pretty nice um, if I have a lot of, you know, I have a unique television that I need to be selling. Mm. Um, but definitely, you know, longer consideration cycle is probably, you know, the performance benefits not quite there. But for anything short of that, performance benefits pretty nice. Um, and and then again, the, there's the, the the content commerce blend. I think that's a great point of consideration. Um, the other one is is whether you have a repeat customer base. Um, and I've I've heard people talk about this one more recently. Um, but given that there's a larger payload for a PWA on the first visit to the site, um, you know, do I get all of that net benefit? If somebody came to the site, did it once, I made them wait slightly longer to get that first payload, um, is there a net benefit? But if they're coming back because they're, it's a subscription product or it's you know, uh, uh, something that they're coming back and, and reordering or they really like engaging with the brand, that's where I think you get a lot of net benefit. Um, because you're, you're actually going to see the results of a PWA build. Um, you know, you don't know what, what you just said there was subtle, but the first page load speed um, sounds like it's not where we're getting these big gains from in conversion rate. It's actually more of the page to page transition load speed. Um, and and I, I think you touched on it, but just wonder if you wanted to expand on that, Noah, because I think that's a good point. I think people think, oh, a PWA, even that first page load is going to be instantaneous. And I'm not sure if that's actually the problem that technology is, is solving. Yeah, I think, I mean, it's, it's the, I mean, people don't know when they hit a website, if it's a PWA or it's not a PWA. They're not, they're not thinking through the, their, their, just their purchase decisions from that standpoint. Um, and so... You know that that first page load. Um, I mean, you should always be optimizing that. I mean, you always want to be able to get you know a a, a, a meaningful screen paint pretty quickly uh, to the end user. But you have a little bit of leeway there. But the next step from that is going page to page. The responsiveness of the whole UI. How natural does it feel? Um, I don't have the numbers about what like what feels natural to people. But there's there is a a clear like I'm waiting. And then there's a clear like this is the amount of time I should expect to to you know wait for this stuff or to before I, I see the next thing after clicking on things, um, and if you can hit or exceed those those standards, you do see a net benefit. You see people feeling more comfortable with the experience. Um, the longer they have to wait, the more lag there is between between click and interaction. I mean, just think if you're even with an in-page interaction on a traditional website, if you clicked on something and you had to wait two seconds for it to, you know, start doing something, that just doesn't feel natural. You're going to try to find somebody who doesn't operate that way. But if you can make your whole site behave at that speed, um, that does have a a, a a big positive. Right. I I think that threshold is at least for Nacelle, it's around 100 milliseconds, right? So mm -hmm. certainly anything like two seconds is going to feel awkward. Um, but at 100 milliseconds and, and you know, so, some of the work that you and your team have done, Noah, it's, you know, 40 milliseconds or so is, is about where it lands. And so, you know, you're coming well under that 100 mark threshold. So even shopping on brands like Barefoot Dreams, you know, that Zayner executed, it's, it's, it's quite a different experience after that first initial load where you're going through and your brain doesn't have to wait. And so browsing the catalog and looking at all the cool stuff, it just becomes a very natural flow. Um, it, it's exceptional. Yeah, we, and we, I think we spent a lot of time too thinking through the experience, even for that first page, to make sure that, that first page load, even though the payload for delivering the whole app was a little bit bigger, that we weren't expecting somebody to have to wait 
to load all the assets for that home page experience before they could see things. Like we were doing a lot of lazy loading to make that even that first page experience feel uh, responsive to the yeah. to the end user. And and it does. It's a very fast one. <laughs> very good. <laughs>